Are you ready? Because I don't think you are. Ow. Oh, it hurt my leg. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Liberty and you are here to watch another week in my life. If you haven't seen the first one I did back in March 2022, then check up here or down here or wherever. It is my third year now packing everything possible into these last six months before literally all of my exams that count because for some reason a lot of Cambridge degrees, the only bit that actually counts is the third year exams. Doesn't make sense. So come along with me while I get up to my tricks, my japes, my mistakes. My whole life is like reading, running around to things, being late and trying to jam in as many social and like creative activities as I possibly can without like actually raising enough alarm bells that I get told off for not doing my degree. You know, it's a balancing act. Busy world, busy life. Let's get on with it. This coat absolutely does not fit um, over this jumper, but we're making it happen. I don't care for impossibles. So yesterday didn't go quite as planned. Um, <laughs> As you can see, I originally went to Waterstones and to my shock and horror, it closes at five, which I didn't know, didn't tell me that on the website. So then I was like, right, I have to go somewhere else then. After talking to my mum on the phone for a bit, I decided to go to King's Library because it's close and it was open. Um, but unfortunately, it really was not exactly the time for me to be trying to do work, especially work that I didn't really want to do because I fell asleep. <laughs> I literally fell asleep at the desk, head on the table and slept for like over an hour, which was really strange. And then I woke up and I was too late for surgery dinner and it threw everything off, blah, blah, blah. But here we are, we move. I will just have to really try and get this essay done today because it's like due today. But yesterday had fun plans because it was Lola's birthday. Here's me. <laughs> Here's me talking about the party. So I'm currently dressed as myself in 2012, um, which is hilarious and also awful because it turns out not much separates me from my 10 year old self bar the fringe. It was celebrating the birthday of Lola. I didn't realize I forgot to take any clips. Sorry, Lola, I was gonna record your birthday, but we did a similar turning 21, all too well 10 minute version, Taylor's version from the vault um, as we did for Tom's birthday back in March. But I am tired, so I'm now going to bed. Um, it is just after midnight and yeah, tomorrow is a new day. Got to bed late. <laughs> Why am I always going to bed late? I don't know, but here we are. Woke up to a fire alarm. We love a chain of events where 10 a.m. really suddenly, very startling to be woken up by a very loud blaring fire alarm. So out we went in our pajamas right onto King's Parade in front of all the tourists and the cyclists. And it then took 45 minutes for the alarm to be turned off because it kept being tripped. They couldn't find a fire. They couldn't even find some smoke. But somewhere in this little complex of buildings, something was going wrong, which is fun and dandy. Um, but it got me up, <laughs> it got me up, got me out of bed, which is helpful because I really do need to do the essay today. So after some brunch slash lunch in the King's Hall with a friend, I am now ready to set off on another quest. Right, so some detail on the work I'm doing right now. Um, I'm doing a San 5 essay. So this is from anthropology and I'm doing um, this paper called San 5, which is all about ethics. Um, I really thought it was gonna be more methodological and kind of grounded than it is. It's very theoretical, which is not my cup of tea. So I'm struggling a bit. All the moral philosophy goes right over my head. Ironic, really, but gotta do it. And the first essay for this module, like at the beginning of term, I didn't do because I was sick at the time. So I really have to do this one because the way I'm gonna be getting some slightly concerned emails and I really have to get my head around it now. So here we are. But I also have another essay due tomorrow, which I haven't e even started reading for either. Um, this is all because of being sick earlier in term, just didn't do anything, now everything's due. But the one that I'm gonna be moving on to after moral philosophy is very cool. I'll tell you more about it when I start the work, but just know that I, I just, um, 
I couldn't ask for a better topic. So let's go and find a library, shall we? Please don't kill anything in front of me. morning and I'm supposed to be in a lecture it's 10 36 um why am I not in the lecture you ask the answer is because I procrastinated getting out of bed again it happens it happens you know the reason I'm filming this is partly for your enjoyment and partly because I was hoping it would force me to actually go to my lectures through peer pressure but that didn't happen so here we are and instead I'm going to be um doing some work I'm just gonna head over to the library. First of all, I'm gonna have my toast, because quite honestly, I need some breakfast. Hi. Then I'm gonna go over to Sidg site, to Sidgwick site, which is where all the sort of humanities stuff generally is, including most of the lectures. Um, and it has a bunch of libraries and including my favorite one. So I'll be heading that way to do some work, have some lunch when it's time, and then there's some more exciting stuff happening this afternoon, and obviously I'll show you all of it. Right, so what's been happening today? It is Monday. Um, you saw me this morning not leaving on time for my lecture. After that I went to the library, I went to the English Faculty Library. I kind of procrastinated a bunch though, so by the time I really started working, um, a friend of mine turned up and was like, oh, do you want to go and get lunch with me and the others? And I was like, oh, okay, I will. <laughs> But that was really nice and then went to a rally <laughs> went to a rally on downing site which was about fossil free research because unfortunately the university of cambridge still accepts a lot of money uh towards research from terrible terrible companies like bp shell schlumberger members of lobbying organizations like the american petroleum institute that, that allows them to engage and they can change so being vaguely part of a bunch of different sort of environmental groups. I was like, right, go to that, hold a sign, listen to some speeches, nice times. That the University of Cambridge needs to remember that the word collaboration has two senses. I have no doubt at all about the ultimate success of my cause. Then finally went up to the Haddon Library, the anthropology one, um, which if you've joined me in vlogs before you would have seen. There I actually kind of got down to it mostly because I had to and I read a bunch of the very distressing but very good um, Oxford handbook of eugenics thing the introductory chapter to this kind of whopper of a book all about the history of eugenics and the way it's shown up across the world because I'm currently doing a really really interesting essay um on the topic of disability gender and eugenics which is like one of the best things I've ever studied it was a fantastic lecture last Thursday so I'm really excited to delve into it because it intertwines with so much stuff I, I care about, like disability studies, medical sexism, psychology, scientific racism, racism in general. Um, so much interesting stuff that goes into how normal has been defined. And so I'm kind of loving it. It's just a lot to read about. Like people have done some horrible stuff in the name of science. So it's 
it's a lot. I know it's going to be an absolute hell of a supervision. It's going to be really interesting to talk about it because the lecturer is just fabulous and they're doing the supervisions as well. And I know that I can't even try to read enough in time to write an essay. So I'm just going to be trying my best, slapping something out. And then when I've got time later in the year, like for revision purposes, I will definitely be doing this topic and I will, you know, delve as deep as I can into something that's just really personal to me. kind of date situation like a kind of in between -y, not really defined as a date but with someone I'm seeing kind of situation bit of a complex one going on but um anyway then came back here had dinner with my housemate went to go and see a concert of my other friend at Trinity College Then we came back here to go to the King's Bar. And now I'm finally in my bed. And that's really where I belong. <laughs> so now I'm going to listen to some music and probably fall asleep. Because I also fell asleep in Trinity Chapel. Which is not allowed. <laughs> Thanks for joining me Monday. See you tomorrow on Tuesday. Right, so to absolutely no one's surprise, I have once again not getting out of bed in time for a lecture again it was supposed to be at 10 a.m um and here we are so i'm just gonna have my breakfast get showered and leave i don't know you know those days where you just wake up and you're just like i really 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 can't face the idea of having a shower right now but i was like i need to have a shower so then i procrastinated and then it was too late and i was like mm. oh well so it's really cold in here it suddenly got really cold i know that this is like a horrendously mild November, like climate change and global warming has a significant effect on the temperature at this point. It is still cold enough significantly in the last week or so, there's been a drop that I'm actually feeling very cold and I really wish that they left the heating on during the day because it's only on like in the evening, I think, and it makes me cold and tired in the morning. So, <laughs> so the reason it was so cold this morning wasn't just me, it was actually the, the heating had stopped working. So I tried to get in the shower and it was frigid. It was really quite awful. So after taking a detour to my friend's building, I have had a very nice long, actually hot shower and I'm finally ready to leave. Which means first stop is lunch. <laughs> day but it's now it's only tuesday yeah it's tuesday evening 15th of november and times are changing i've done some work today but as i say things kind of went awry so not as much work as i would have liked to and i just realized that an essay wasn't going to happen on the disability and eugenics essay front um so i emailed and was like look i can do notes and bring some thoughts and things for discussion but i am not capable of a fully formed essay right now And I haven't heard anything in response, but I assume they'll be nice about it because this person who was our lecturer seems like an actually very nice and understanding person. So let's hope. I was saying my week had been a failure, but apparently not. <laughs> Interesting to read about all this stuff, you know, eugenics is not exactly a happy topic matter. It's just a lot of really awful traumatic stuff to read and it all has such like direct pertinent impact on stuff that I care about so vividly today like queer issues and disability rights issues and uh concepts of abnormality and neuro neurodivergence 
there's a lot to comprehend. It's 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 weighing on me a lot. It's a lot to grapple with, but that's why I'm so pleased that I get the chance to study this because I haven't before in my whole degree like two years in and this is the first time they brought up most of this stuff i'm just really grateful for the opportunity to actually read about this and learn about this things that really directly mattered to me because that's been my frustration with a lot of the course so far is the way that it's very abstracted like it's it's academia it's not necessarily that related to any real world issues and if it is it's in a very kind of highbrow sense but i care about the world around me, the people around me, and the way that like the things we're talking about actually relate to the real world. Um, and this topic, I really feel that, like I feel that connection and that's why it's so visceral <laughs> and it's a lot emotionally to, to grasp, but that's so much better than just sort of pure theoretics, which don't mean anything at the end of the day. Like, what does that, what does that help? <laughs> what does that do? At the beginning of term, my DOS, um, so Director of Studies, who's basically like my supervisor, sort of general supervisor for the course of the year, um, she's really cool, I have a new one this year, and she kind of said to me, like, I was saying, oh yeah, I realised that it takes a lot of energy for me to just, like, do everyday stuff, and if I only have a certain limited amount of energy left for other things, then... I'm going to spend that energy and time on stuff that makes me happy. And a lot of the time that isn't my degree. And I said, and because of that, I've completely come to like the firm conclusion that I'm so fine getting like a two one. That's incredible behavior. I'm not really even kind of gunning for a first. Um, and I said that to her and she kind of like, you know, asked about what specific marks I'd got in previous years and stuff. And she said, well, quite honestly, I think you can get a first. The issue being that you have to let yourself find joy in the stuff you're studying. You've got to make, you've got to let yourself enjoy academics again. And it was kind of quite shocking to hear that, like, I guess just the kind of the comeuppance that I sort of closed myself off to the whole situation because, you know, it does take a lot of work and a lot of mental space. And, you know, I'm kind of coasting day to day rather than actively sticking myself in. But once or twice this term, I've seen what she meant. I've seen what she meant specifically in this one paper. So like module, um, which is SOC 10 gender, gender um, according to sociology. And it has been very largely sort of feminist discourse, which there's nothing wrong with. I'm, you know, I care about this stuff, obviously, like this is <laughs> how I lead my life. But the problem is because it's stuff I already know, you know, there's only so much that second wave feminism can like offer me thoughtfully when I've been brought up on the stuff and much more besides. So I was worried that it was gonna be kind of cut and dry like that. But then every so often there have been moments where there's been something so insightful or incisive or wonderful. And I've read something, I've listened to a lecture and I've thought, wow, this is what I'm here for. This is why I'm studying these world changing topics, these things that have massive impact, the things that matter. It makes me, it makes me proud to be able to contribute to these conversations. It hits different to read someone who's going through the same thing as you, who has gone through the same thing as you, and more importantly, has, has had to grapple with these same issues and come out stronger for it, rather than thought sort of, as it is easy to do, sort of seen all the misogyny in the world and just kind of gone, what can I do about that? You know, people have worked and thought, thought and come together around all these issues before, like this, <laughs> You know, these these are these are decades and decades of history surrounding feminism and queer theory and disability studies and anti-racism and feeling like connection to other people and thinking, wow, yeah, they get it. <laughs> Shout out to Sarah Ahmed, by the way. I have become that which I most feared, Depop edgy. Went down a little bit of an online retail rabbit hole and I was really excited. I was like, oh my gosh. And I spent ages kind of deliberating over which ones to pick. So I was like, you know, I've got to do this properly. If I'm buying new, then it has to be like a real purchase with like thought behind it. And then they came and it turns out that because I was allowing for most shops to be smaller than they say they are, they've actually come larger than they say they are, which is really frustrating. So I bought these from Cider and I was just going through the refund process and I've kind of realized that they are actually fairly fast fashion because 
much like other fast fashion brands like Sheen and stuff, they have this option where you just get the money and they don't ask you to send any of the items back themselves. They just give you a refund straight up. And obviously that's because their business model doesn't actually want to have to pay for the sort of the transportation and the redistribution of these items. Like that's just too much faff for them as a small profit margin situation. They just want them to go to waste effectively like the assumption here is that if you don't use them like some people are going to bother to pass them on to someone else but most people a lot of people at least are probably just going to chuck them in the bin laundry makes me really upset but in my case because these were you know items that i really thought about and i was like you know i weighed up the ethical situation like can i buy these with like good conscience and the answer was yes because i really loved the clothes and i was like i will wear those since i now have an extra set because i'm going to be reordering them all in the size lower with the refund money i now have this extra set that's too large and so i was like well what can i do with it maybe now is the time to become the depop girly you know so i could just go and give all these things to a charity shop but to some extent, like, while I have the opportunity and, like, properly new clothes with tags on, like, I might as well actually sell them on and hopefully there'll be other edgy kids out there on Depop who equally want a goose jumper. Because who doesn't want a goose jumper, you know? Like, I, when I saw that on the website, I was like, that's a must. That is a must. That's not a want, that is a must. The saga continues. Okay, it has been a couple of days since I spoke. It is now, what day is it? It is now Saturday. It's been a couple of days. Um, <laughs> when did I last update you in a coherent manner? Mm, that was probably on Wednesday. Oh yeah, it was, <laughs> it was when I was mid reheating pasta for dinner, I remember now. Quick march to get ah, get some leftover pasta into the microwave because I need to go to a thing in like 10 minutes. But I mean, having many, many portions left of pretty tasty pasta, like nutritious pasta and all, it's quite helpful in situations like this because I'm always late to things. There are always things that I want to go and do and I just leave it slightly too late to leave the house. Or as my mum puts it, I'm eternally optimistic. <laughs> Bit of a scramble back from the English faculty library where I've been for this entire afternoon bar a little walk around for about 15 minutes and got some stuff done but mostly I was just kind of finding and downloading a lot of material for my queer theory topic which is the one that I'm going to be doing now. Disability studies one, I didn't actually write an essay because it just was all going wrong and yesterday I was like, it's not going to happen. But I had the, the supervision on it today, super interesting, and the supervisor, the lecturer, said that I can send in um, an essay for them to mark kind of any time, so that's great. I'll probably do that either in the next couple of weeks or just in Christmas holidays because I do want to have the chance to practice this particular topic. But the good thing is that the disability studies and eugenics stuff it does bleed in quite easily to the queer theory stuff that I'm reading because there's a lot of crossover obviously. Um, the sort of abnormalization, pathologization of certain bodies and all these things like that's it applies to all sorts of people. Um, so <laughs> pasta's done. Talk to you later. <laughs> Okay, so then I went to the theatre. I went to go and see a play called Blue Stockings, which is about the founding cohort of Girton College, which was an all women's college. All about basically like the politics of the situation where women were allowed to enter Cambridge, but weren't allowed to graduate. So weren't allowed to actually get degrees from it. Thank you. And like, it was a very entertaining play. Like you could tell that this was actually a play because it was really kind of well structured and the narrative arc was lovely and all this, but um, but I certainly also felt the white feminism vibes basically just being like, yay, early feminism. Um, when we all know that early feminism was rife with racism, et cetera, et cetera. So much to consider there, but it was very entertaining to go and watch and I'm glad that I did. Then it was raining very, very heavily. 
And then I went and kind of joined in the Ents, like, which is the word for entertainments, because apparently Cambridge students can't say anything more than one syllable long. So the Ents for the formal, which was Moulin Rouge on Wednesday, which is kind of fun. So everyone was wearing like fancy pants, lingerie and like, you know, top hats or whatever. And the Ents afterwards, I came and joined when basically it was just people dancing badly on the dance floor, which is always fun. And then went to bed. Thursday, what happened on Thursday? Um, Okay, firstly, I had my queer theory lecture. Now you might think I would be ecstatic about this, but it was actually disappointing as hell. It was really just like a bit of a frustrating situation because like, I don't really see how something that I care about so much can be done so badly. They basically equated like queer theory with same sex marriage or like reproductive technology. And I think that they really clearly like there was no there was nothing else about queerness raised and i was just like you can't just like go off on one about kinship like queer kinship or just kinship in general and be like this is queer theory because that's not how it works you have to qualify it at the very least by saying today we're going to talk about kinship like that was just frustrating i just felt i just you know basically it's a nail in the coffin of how most of my course has just felt so like out of touch with my actual life and my lived experience in the real world today and this is so deeply the case for queer stuff in general so there we go i don't have the lecturer for the supervision which is good so i'm really hoping that it's like a phd student or something who's like you know down with the kids afterwards um went and had like a quick coffee with one of the people in the lecture and we basically kind of commiserated generally over the whole situation um and then went and worked in the King's Bar for a bit, which is like a study space during the day. And then my friend Dan came to lunch. What are your thoughts, Dan? I'm, I'm, I'm so confused. <laughs> Why? What's confusing about this stately room in which we're eating our very bad normal savoury lunch? <laughs> well, Formanton Hall just has school canteen in the gym. And this is, this is a church. I like to think that we like actually live in a National Trust house. Um, you do. And then we went to the Whale Cafe, which is pretty funky actually. It's got a massive whale skeleton hanging from the ceiling a la blue whale in the natural history museum because it is actually a natural history museum it's the museum of zoology which if you've seen my last um week in the life there is footage of me and my brother going to visit that um but yeah we just went to the whale cafe which is like a pretty good hangout spot for studying because they really don't mind you staying there for ages um but i didn't end up doing any work <laughs> we just kind of were like chatting the whole time um the, the the haze of tiredness had set in by this point, but I don't think I realised that, so much to think about. And then I went and sat in on a lecture all about the sociology of health and illness. I thought I'd give it a stab, because you're allowed to do that. Basically, the whole thing is called auditing. You're allowed to audit any lecture going on, like any anything like that at all across the university if you wanted, like completely just whenever and wherever you want the only issue is whether you'll understand it or enjoy it but i was like i really do want to go and see that these lectures they they sounded really cool um i didn't love it top enough to actually pick it but i was like this sounds really cool i was a bit hesitant about the whole situation as someone who was disabled i was like mm, hmm is the ableism going to be strong here is there going to be some very reductive harmful narratives about health and behavior and stuff and unfortunately, yes, um, it was a bit of a situation because it was all, it was, the, the lecture title was Social Determinants of Behaviour. <sighs> it was, it was a lot. I spent the whole thing basically arguing with the lecturer, don't really feel too bad about it, problematic and dodge from start to finish. And then went and kind of 
huddled with a few people in the anthropology common room. I don't have any footage of that either. Sorry about that. Um, but that was just basically us in pure delirium by the end of this ridiculous sociology lecture. Just <laughs> week seven starting even though week six had been like three weeks in one and it was just a whole situation because you know Cambridge week start on Thursday and then the you know the chaos only intensified you can see that here while I explain my evening plans right there are many layers of evening plans that I have to deal with I've got this and trans flag um, because going to a trans protest against um, outside the union because they're doing a whole this house believes in the right to offend effectively it's just like free speech turfs being like um, it's fine it's free speech and then there's like the trans protest outside which is this community believes in the right to resist so that's a protest happening however before I realized that was happening this evening I agreed and paid for um, a seat at a formal at Peterhouse College. So I'm also packing my formal gown, which is with the Blackbird Society, the Poetry Society. So I do want to go, but it's at the same time and I feel really bad about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and go to the Blackbird formal, see how long it takes. Hopefully there's still a protest happening, almost inevitably there will be. So I can then like dash back to the center of town and across to the union. Um, really hope I can make it. If I can't, you know, I've tried my best. I've tried my best, it's all I can do. I didn't realise the timings clashed and obviously my support goes wholly to the trans community and not TERFs. Um, yeah, so it all kind of went to plan. Fit chat, it's giving you Lucy and Yak, it's giving trying to cover the trans flag while also dressing for a formal, while also being warm. did go to the formal did go to the protest which unfortunately it was completely not going our way it turns out because even though um one of the turfs in the actual union was really genuinely phased by us outside like kind of yelling apparently didn't do much for the vote itself so very, 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 very strongly in favour, people voted that people do have the right to offend, um, which essentially was, in this case, voting for turf ideology. We love when these things accidentally happen. Afterwards, I walked a friend back to their house, which is like ages away, and then I had a cup of tea because I was freezing my ass off. Then I walked back down to college, and then it was really late, and I was like, ah. Okay. Friday oh my god so many days Friday oh my gosh yesterday was so direct I literally wake up and I was like I can't do it this is too much I'm so tired like this is not the day to be trying to pack things in but I had to because I had things I had to do including but not limited to I would organized to be an interviewee for this PhD researcher in the morning so I had to like you know, let them in awkwardly in my pajamas while still trying to make my breakfast at 11 a.m. I looked and sounded and felt dazed. All about sexuality and pop culture, representation of queerness and all that good stuff, stuff I care about. Then a kind of rushed lunch. And then, do you remember that whole thing I did in the summer, you know, the teaching qualification? Um, I have still to finish the qualification, that's what I'm doing. And so yesterday I had to do a three hour exam. <laughs> A three hour exam, um, language awareness, which is like grammar, phonology, like parts of speech, all this kind of stuff. And it was just horrendous. I realized I really should have revised. Um, but we're aiming for past, folks. It was it was not a good time. It was not a good time, but we're, it's done now, it's done now. Then went to um, a lecture. Tariff type sentence, going late. 
which was all about um, how sentencing works. Criminal justice system in England and Wales, which is where all of this is based, because, you know, they can give you a vaguely sort of global approach, but really everything they're talking about is about the penal system, specifically like this one, because um, it's actually a law course, so it's kind of catering for law students who are going to go on to train as lawyers, blah, blah, blah. You see how it is. Um, there's a lot of really interesting cross, uh, cross-cultural stuff to reference and such. Anyway, it was okay. I'm just a bit like, oh my God, the law is terrible. And that's kind of the attitude I come out of every single criminology lecture with at this point. But I did get to a lecture this week. I went to two, two lectures. The two that were not Sam 5, three Sam 5 lectures I didn't go to this week. So we're not gonna talk about that. And then finally, to top it all off, it was Spanish night in King's Servery, which meant that they were serving tapas, sangria, and various oddities like that. The sangria was actually really tasty, but the tapas was confusing, bad, and way too expensive. And Amelia, our Spanish friend, who kind of had asked us all to kind of go as a group outing, she was genuinely horrified. Like, the, her eyes were like crazy, crazy eyes. There was actually so little food for the price that I had to go to McDonald's and get some chips afterwards. <laughs> Partial, partial to the red wine. <laughs> and smile and wave if you're willing to be in this thing. Alex, sorry, you're already in it. Then a quick trip to the pub, then a bit of a date situation. <sighs> and now it's today. So here we are, come full circle. Um, it's now Sunday, it's about 2 p.m. But after 2 p.m. I've just had lunch with my friend. Um, I cooked her lunch with some leftover pasta I had. It was nice. It was really lovely to chat with them, but I very much need to go and do some work now. Well, this hasn't been the most coherent of weeks. I, uh, I apologize for the fact that I barely filmed anything on Friday and filmed one clip only yesterday. Although to be fair, that's because I spent the entirety of Saturday, and I mean the entirety, um, in my bed in my pajamas, mostly in the dark. Um, the only other things I did were a yoga sesh, a shower, and as I, as I can show you now, looking after my friend's dog. It's, it was a chill day, it was very much a needed day because I was exhausted. It's been a lot of effort, a lot of walking to and fro, and a lot of being tired. I've got some things done, and I hope that I've shown you some elements of life here at Cambridge, even if it's perhaps not what you were expecting. This is a very different energy of a week in the life than the one I filmed in March, so bear with me. <laughs> I hope I've shown you some sights and sounds. Like, this might not be as informative as some of my other videos in the sense that I really have just been filming random snip, snip bit, no, no that's, not, that's not the word, random tidbits of my days. Sorry about that, but hopefully you've seen a little bit of what I've been up to and let me know what you think down in the comments. Ask me any questions if you want. I can do a whole actual video, like explaining my degree and stuff, if that is useful, because I know that my degree is a weird one with weird terminology and sort of the way it's structured and that's because Cambridge is weird like that so if anyone wants a dedicated video on HSPS let me know and I'll catch you all next time thanks so much for being here love you very much have a wonderful rest of your day goodbye oh and make sure to like and subscribe and comment and all that okay bye <laughs>